I mean, far from being the least, is uh, Jeff Williams, Chief Operating Officer of Apple. And uh, our partnership with Apple uh, did not go back very far, but uh, it has been intense and <laughs> and it's important, uh, certainly very important for TSMC and I've been told that it's very important for Apple too. Uh, Jeff? Thank you, Dr. Chang. Um, I was uh, I was going to run through our very detailed uh, product roadmap for the next few years and ask all of you to just keep it amongst us. But uh, like Jensen, I had some slide issues, so I'm just going to uh, ramble on in for a few minutes instead. Uh, first off, thank you. Uh, it's a real honor to be here with this, uh, with this distinguished group. And, uh, and we're here, of course, to celebrate TSMC's 30 years. It's and, and it's amazing, as you've seen in the in the slides, how far technology has has been driven over that time. TSMC got its start shortly after the introduction of the Cray 2 supercomputer, legendary Cray 2, and 25 years later, uh, we put the same processing power in people's pockets with an iPhone 4 in 2010. It's really it really is remarkable, and it was actually 2010 that the first seeds of our partnership between Apple and TSMC were planted. I had flown to Taiwan and uh, had dinner with, uh, with Dr. Chang and Sophie at their house. And it was, uh, it was a wonderful dinner. Uh, we were not doing business with TSMC at the time, but we had a great conversation. We talked about the possibilities of doing stuff together, and, and we knew the possibilities were great if we could take leading edge technology and marry it with our, our ambitions. Um, and, and what seems obvious right now wasn't then, because the risk was very substantial. Uh, the, the nature of the way Apple does business is we, we put all of our energy into our new products, and then we launch them. And uh, if we were to bet heavily on TSMC, there would be no backup plan. You cannot double plan the kind of volumes that, uh, that we do. We want leading edge technology, but we want it at established technology kind of volumes. And so that, that may be what Dr. Chang's referring to when he mentions intense. Uh, for the TSMC side, it, it means a huge capital investment and it means ramping faster than the more careful yield plan that the industry is used to. Um, but together, we decided to, uh, to take the bet, take the leap, and uh, Apple decided, so our first engagement, Apple decided to, to have 100% of our new iPhone and new iPad chips application processors sourced at TSMC. And TSMC invested $9 billion and had 6,000 people working round the clock to bring up a Tainan fab in record 11 months. And in the end, the execution was flawless. And we've gone on together to ship uh, over half a billion chips together in, in that short window. And I, I think TSMC's invested $25 billion. $9 billion on that first venture. There are very few companies in the world that spend $9 billion in capital across everything, not a single bet. So for that, uh, we thank you, Dr. Chang, and everybody at, the, at TSMC. It's been, it's been a wonderful partnership. Now, the, the request was for me to describe the next uh, 10 years in silicon, which, uh, which I'm completely incapable of doing. And so I'm going to frame or reframe the question. I think in politics they call this a pivot. But, uh, um, you know, it's interesting. When we look back a decade ago, 
the question we had was, do we have enough processing power in our silicon to match our ambitions? The big challenge we had as we moved into the mobile revolution was this trade-off between performance and power. And the view at the time is you had to choose. You've got one or the other. And uh, largely as a result of what uh, the fabulous model has done, what TSMC has done, what many people in this room have done, Simon and his organization from ARM, we have reached a point where those trade-offs are not necessary. We have performance in thermally constrained uh, environments. And so this opens up for the next day, decade a whole new world. So for the next decade, the question is, is not so much do we have enough processing power to meet our ambitions, though we need to keep working. Of course, we need to drive better lithography. Don't slow down. But I think the, the question for us is, do we have the right ambitions to go utilize this technology in front of us? We at Apple are not concerned about the slowing, the talk of a slowing, uh, slowing semiconductor industry. Not the case at all. We think the potential is huge. We, we believe strongly in both the cloud side, but the future will be a lot of on-device processing. We believe, this is, we believe this is the best way to deliver great features without sacrificing the responsiveness and the privacy and the security. We see in our brand new A11 Bionic chip, which is made right here at TSMC, every time somebody takes a photo, there's over 100 billion operations. That's just mind-boggling. Single photo, over 100 billion operations. The potential is limitless. We put a neural engine on the chip, and I won't repeat uh, some of the things that uh, Jensen uh, shared. We have the same view and vision of the potential of AI to deliver, to deliver a, a much safer and efficient, autonomous, efficient autonomous system. Uh, we believe in, it, it's, an, it's already enabled, the neural engine on our chip has already enabled face ID, uh, processed locally. And so we view that the next 10 years is about the ambition to do what Simon daughter, Simon's daughter is asking for, to make life better. And probably one of the most significant examples of this is our opportunity to use transistor technology advances and power scaling to revolutionize health care. We think the industry is ripe for change. Uh, we think there's tremendous temp potential to do on-device on com computing, to do cloud computing as well, and to take that learning and through machine learning, deep learning, and ultimately artificial intelligence, change change the way healthcare is delivered. And we can't think of anything more significant than this. So I think the question in front of us is, do we have the right ambitions? And can we go do this? And there is no such thing as autonomous innovation. Human beings, human beings dream it, human beings drive it. And sure, we'll have, uh, we'll have deep learning, but there's not autonomous innovation, so it's up to us, this generation, over the next 10 years, to take advantage of what, what is in front of us on the silicon world. We at Apple are really inspired. For those of us who started uh, many years ago on a green monochrome computer screen, we're super inspired with the state we're in. And I'll just, I'll just say this. If in the next 10 years, from a society standpoint, we just do a few gee whiz things like flying car kind of dreams, and then the rest of the time we're using the faster chips to do the same things we're doing faster, we will have squandered one of the biggest opportunities in front of us. I think we're at an inflection point, much like my colleagues, with on-device computing coupled with the potential of AI 
to really, really change the world. And we couldn't be more excited about it at Apple. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.